So we've always had a, a strong sort of um, involvement in mapping all our projects right from back when we were using, you know, the handwritten maps through to sort of, I suppose, our mapping portal now, which is the, you know, the latest. But being able to, the beauty of the, the mapping portal as we have it now is that everybody can use it. The interim planning portal is being used by local land care groups and networks to share their knowledge and their information about their local area and bring it up into the spatial mapping portal. And the catchment management authorities are using uh, the planning portal to bring their information and their regional information and into, that, into that one same space. The portal um, is a planning platform, that's the way I see it. It's, it's, it looks like a website, but it's not. It's, most websites, you can hang information on it and it's just a one-dimensional piece of, um, I suppose, a source of information. Whereas the planning portal, it, it shoots out everywhere, it grabs information from everywhere. We're working with a group called the Way Do You Like Catchment Group and they've supplied us data and to bring up into the system and we can display that. So if I bring up uh, the group boundary, you can see that that's the Way Do You Lakes area of interest. Uh, and you can see straight away that they have still, still got the, the uh, CMA's regional um, priority waterways highlighted there. You can straight, straight away see that there's some priorities from the CMA in their region. But what the Wadia has done um, and helped us with is bring their information up in terms of what they've been doing in the, in the past as well, in terms of their own land care activities and their own NRM work. No tree guards, so there's no rabbits. No, there's no rabbits down here. The biggest problem he's had is kangaroos. Yeah. Just playing okay. with the trees and just yep. being destructive. Yep. So this like is the Naringal Creek, which is a major tributary to the Wodialik River. Obviously that's our main river. Um, and the landholder here, Evan Lewis, Evan and Suzanne Lewis, this is their property and they're doing a project to protect and enhance their waterway. So the first thing is to fence out the waterway uh, and then they're planting it up to preserve the, the beautiful old red gums that are here and then planting it out with extra vegetation to try just enhance that riparian environment. So the Wadi Alec project is over 20 years old now and a lot of landholders like the Lewises have been involved for you know most of that time and they've steadily been working on projects. So yes, it's not something that you just do one year and most of our farming community are fantastic in that they, they have stayed with the projects through thick and thin and you know just continually building up the projects. And we're now getting to that happy situation where you're actually talking to landholders and we've been doing planning meetings in the last week and talking to them about what you know, do you want to do any tree planting or do you want to do this? And they're saying, oh, I think I've got most of my trees planted. So, you know, after 20 years, really starting to see that they're starting to achieve some of their, some of the goals that they're wanting to, to get out of land care. So we map all our, our projects and that's recorded um, on the mapping portal. You can look at any of the works that we've done across 20 years and see them. You open up the map and suddenly you turn on where all the trees are and it's really, really visual. But you can also look at things like what are our priorities? So each year our community and every, they do a, a simple planning every year and then they do a more complex planning every five years where they're looking where they want to go. And we put all that on the maps. And we can then look at that in conjunction with the CMA who also have their own priorities and look at, well, where are the overlaps? And straight away we can, we can talk with the likes of the CMA and, and say, well, look, here, here's a visual representation of what our community wants. There's what you want. Let's see where we've got some synergies and some overlap. Natural resource management can mean a lot of things are different people, and that's one of the beauties of it, and one of the bad things about it, I suppose. Um, but to me, it's about um, learning about how our natural assets, our native edge, our wetlands, our waterways, soil, um, how it functions, what its threats are, coming up with the right solutions, the right actions to address those threats, uh, and, and and making a journey with um, both, um, you know the experts, the scientists, but also the land managers who are in, essentially will have to manage those assets. One thing, a lesson learned that we've learned that's come from this is uh, it's been a, a really great um, engagement tool. So it's, 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 it's been a really good medium for um, both land care and, and the CMA to look at what each of our priorities are and seeing that there's a lot of um, common um, areas that we both want to work in. We all use it at different levels, but 
it's immediately something that everyone can interact with. So the CMA can look at it, they can add data, we can look at it, we can add our own data, we can look at other land care networks that are on it. The general public can go onto our website or the CMA website and click on and go, well, what's Bodie Alec doing? And let's zoom in and have a look at Werneth and see what projects are being done there. And combining that with the spatial element, so as a planning tool, so um, GIS, it's a very, very good way of um, looking at a landscape like this and prioritising where to um, do works and invest in. That's how projects like this came about, by just looking at that and going, well, here's some waterway projects that are out in our priority zone and that fits in with the sort of priorities that you want to have. It opens it up and it also when you're sitting planning with landholders and you can take it from their individual level to zoom it out, they get that appreciation that, well, yes, what I'm doing up here is going to have an impact, you know, 100 kilometres away on, on someone else further down the catchment. From both sides learning about how to engage properly, we're, we, yeah, we're getting sites like this um, revegetated and enhanced and hopefully protected for future gener generations. And you can look at it in conjunction with not just Evan and Suzanne's project, but what the neighbours are doing and upstream and downstream. So it sort of gives you a much bigger appreciation of how it fits, a project fits into the whole landscape and how it, you know, how it meets the different needs of the local community, but also what our funding bodies want as well.